Well, the stage is set for some pretty stellar semifinals. He can still land. Here comes Hooney. He's on the make-go. Rainover is going to stay alive. MSI is the place to prove, and I want to prove that I'm a good jungler. He's going to get caught up. It's another beautiful kill, but triple for Anne. I think if I play with FLB, it will be a little bit of a skill. But I think it will be a lot of fun. Triple kill. The ugly is coming back alive. Quadra kill for Daft. I think our strength is definitely stronger than them. I think if we play the right way, I think... Time to kill. Time to kill. Undefeated in the group stages. Yes, I think Huni played maybe better than Marin. I don't think Marin is better than Huni. Then Huni 선수는 한국에서 솔로 랭크에서 많이 만나봤는데. 기대되는 반면 또 이길 자신도 있는 상대입니다. Before we come MSI, I thought SKT was undefeatable. Fnatic gave SK Telecom a run for their money like nobody else could. Every one of us have confidence against the SKT at the best of five. Maybe we can make some surprise. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to day three of the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational. We're coming to you live from the campus of Florida State University, where four teams have emerged out of the group stage and will battle it out for international bragging rights. As you can see here in the arena, lots of energy. And just moments ago, Easy Hoon and SKT walking in, prepping for their game against Fnatic, Daylor, and the rest of the team. Getting some last minute strategies in order for that best of five series. Unpacking their gear here, Def and EDG. They'll be in the second series up against AHQ, who's doing a little bit of fueling up before their big match. Sustenance, very important. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson. Great to have you with us for another action packed day. And joining me on the analyst desk are Oceanus Jake Spawn Tiberi, who cast the English language LPL matches. Then from the European LCS, we have the coach of the Unicorns of Love, Fabian Sheepy Milant. Sharing the player's perspective is jungler Alberto Crumbs Rangifo. And last but not least is Aiden Zyrene Moon from the North American LCS. Now, to start us off, let's see how the teams are stacked up after our first two days of play. Taking first with a perfect 5-0 is SK Telecom T1. One game back, it's Edward Gaming, followed by AHQ Esports Club, and Fnatic taking the last semi-final spot. Rounding out the standings are TSM in fifth and Besiktas Esports Club uh, in sixth. Now, there were a lot of hometown fans that were disappointed by TSM showing so far in this tournament. Yeah, TSM, you know, nobody is, in as, nobody is as disappointed as TSM is in themselves after that performance. Because this is a team that put all the emphasis of the season on performing internationally, and they didn't deliver. So they have a lot of thinking, basically back to the drawing board after this. And I think they were exposed by Fnatic, because they came into that first game of the entire tournament, six top lane bans total in that game, and then Dyrus just looked like a non-factor. In the four games that they lost, Dyrus was first-blooded every game. They are not putting resources top, and they don't have the synergy and the team cohesion to actually pull off strategies that revolve around that, and that is a big problem that they need to just focus on during the offseason and then come back with a better strategy. Now, meanwhile, SKT has been showing up huge this week going 5-0. and They've shown they can close out a game with an early lead, but they can also play from behind, as we saw against AHQ. An impressive thing about this team is that even when they're losing, their dragon control is immaculate. They're always ahead in dragons, and their statistics for them winning by taking the early dragon is out of this world. Whichever team plays against them, I think will probably lose down in the dragon. They have seen a little bit of flaws in giving up a lot of kills. When, when they bring the fight to SKT with a little bit of unconventional roams and just focusing the kills, they tend to just not be there. Now, another team that has been playing very well is Fnatic. They've picked up enough wins to make it to semis. And it's a situation, I feel, where their, their record doesn't accurately uh, uh, picture so, oh, their, their, their play, exactly. Yeah, I think they come out way stronger than everybody was expecting them to be. I think 2-3 is their status right now, but giving SKT a run for their money, honestly, and 
facing off them today, I think that we have a really good series on our hands. Of course, then we have AHQ who were in fourth in their region during the regular season, but this week have been playing like a team that is out to prove their critics wrong. Yeah, and one of their biggest critics was me on the desk and they've certainly shown up. Their top, uh, top laner Ziv, as well as their jungle pressure from Mountain is much better than I ever expected. I knew their mid laner was good, no one can doubt Westor, and very much surprised me, but these other guys around the roster are really stepping up huge for their team, and you have to give credit where credit's due. They look like one of their heavy hitters at the moment. I really like in the video how An was talking about his matchup against Deft, and you know, they recognize their strength, but they're not getting overconfident. He says that, okay, Deft is better than me, but not by that much. And just to pick up on Sif, I think that Sif had a really strong showing yesterday against Marin when he played Mauka against Nar, dodging so many skill shots with this W and always trading perfectly. That was actually really well successful. Now, finally, we have to talk about EDG. They had a rocky start to the event, but look to be in peak form on day two. Yeah, they certainly do, and it's back before 5.5 EDG. The early game kings really coming out. Their jungle pressure early game is absolutely incredible. And the thing that makes me excited about this is they seem to go early game against the aggressive teams, but I think they can go late game against SKT. They've proven on the current patch that they're able to take these games late and rely on Coral and Death. So best early game and late game? <laughs> would you call them the super team already? I would call them the super, the super team. Super I would team. say in this tournament, they're four out of the five strongest for their position individually. All right, well, we already knew that. Now turning to today's action, we are bringing you two best of five series where our four Four remaining teams will fight to secure a spot in our finals. Up first today is number one seed SK Telecom T1 versus Fnatic. After that, Edward Gaming will take on AHQ Esports Club. And during yesterday's games, you were calling out all the flays, saves, and big plays on Twitter. Our first comes from BJK versus EDG at Rolos0912 says the unofficial deft penta with the swag flash to Vade Sejuani. Let's take a look. As he's just going to take down that poor little Siva Dumbledore, able to get the exhaust off, but Death being the hero oh, flashes over the off the no Triple kill, the Oculus comes back alive. Quadra kill for Death. The Okie doke. Death just like a matador right there. Sent oh, no. runs right past. I love I, that. I absolutely love that because when people are flashing and choosing a flash direction, they usually cover backwards options and flash away. Flashing forward is just a great move, and it shows just deft in the late game and his and positioning. And I really love the castles. Always I was going to say, I just want to watch Atlas <laughs> watch <laughs> the <laughs> game. Now our next one comes from SKT versus Fnatic. At Benati 2 k says that Baron steal could cause SKT's reign to be over. About to become Megan, our wolf, very low health. Who he comes in from behind, getting in position for that old faker. Swipes away. He's, he's oh, fallen. There it is. Whoa! Right over steals the Baron. And SK Telecom, what are they going to do? New shot, new shot, new shot, new shot, new shot, new shot. I got it, I got it, I got it. New shot, new shot, new shot, new shot. New shot, new shot, new shot. Get away from him, get away I feel like these Twitter big plays are just being introduced by random freak Twitter accounts that are just coming <laughs> in with the puns. <laughs> I just love the fact that like half of them took their hands off the keys when he yelled, I got it. And then they're like, oh wait, we have to keep fighting. Anyway, our final one comes from the same match at Kyle C. Isoko says, SKT bang just went bang, 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 double, triple, bang, bang. Quadra bang, bang, Penta! <laughs> he manages to catch Faker with his ultimate, but Faker back away, Fnatic in big trouble, double kill for Bang already, make it a triple kill, and now SK Telecom, despite that big up for Femivin. Bang's going in! Oh, Femivin near Penta! Penta. That's a Penta kill, I believe! Penta. Yes, it is! For Bang! I think he just went bang, bang into the room. Yeah, and bang, bang all over them, too. <laughs> 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 All right, that's enough. <laughs> anyway, remembering to, remember to keep sending those world-class moments into at Lull Esports as they happen and include the hashtag MSI Big Plays. Not only did Fnatic versus SKT uh, game grab two of our big plays, but it was also our first Baron Steel and Pentakill of the Midseason Invitational. That triggered a mystery gift bonus in the store that doubles your chance to gift someone an Esports or Legendary skin through May 15th. Then remember to stay connected with us on Twitter. We want to see how you and your friends are sharing the Midseason Invitational. We're asking once again, how do you MSI? For reference, this is how we MSI here on the Analyst Desk. Uh, we're going to pull that up right now for you. There it is. As you can see, things got a little out of hand earlier, but uh, we got everything in order. Now send your pictures of your viewing parties and your sweet setups to at Lull Esports along with the hashtag HowIMSI.
In addition to our coverage, the action out of Florida is being beamed around the world in multiple languages. On site, we have Korea's On Game Net covering uh, for the LCK, broadcasting to the fans in China, our representatives from the LPL, and we have our own crack squad of league casters on site as well. Quick Shot Kobe and Monte Cristo will be manning the caster booth for today's first series, and we'll hear from them in just a little bit. But right now, we're going to send it over to Shocks in the interview area, where she's joined by two members of our international wildcard team, Besiktas Esports Club. Thank you very much, Dash. I'm joined here by Thaldren and Energy of the Shiktash Esports Club. As a, well, their tournament is rounded up, and guys, you didn't manage to pull out a win, but you've made some waves, and a lot of people know who you are after this. What has the experience been like here at MSI? It's been really great. Like, I didn't expect that support from the crowd, and it's really it's, it really amazed us. Like, <laughs> look at this crowd. It's so great. Yeah. We just mostly came here to gain experience, and even though it didn't go that well, I think we learned a lot. Yeah, I can uh, definitely vouch for that. Great games as well. Um, how, what does this mean for you guys representing uh, the Turkish Champions League and the Turkish League in the international wildcard scene and here on the international stage? Uh, it's been really great. Like, we kind of don't, like, we are not only representing Turkey. We win the wildcard, so we are representing the seven regions also. So. We kind of did bad, but we learned some of the like mistakes. We are not going to do them uh, in the next tournament. So we are going to be better by the time. Yeah. So is, what is the next tournament going to be? Might it be the World Championship? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I hope Definitely so. hope so. Well, you got to be ambitious. Um, now, of course, you guys played against a bunch of these teams that we'll be seeing here today. I'd love to get your take on the game, starting off at SKT versus Fnatic. How do you think that's going to turn out, Energy? Uh, SKT has looked to be probably one of the most dominant teams here. Uh, they've shown a lot of promise, and that's why I think SKT is going to win it. Tolerant. I agree. Like, I think SKT is going to win. But in the group stage, Fnatic did really good against S SKT. But in the best of five, I think SKT is going to win. All right, well, let's see. Let's hope for the full five games. Thank you guys very much. And now, Dash, back over to you. Thank you, Shocks. The crowd in there going crazy. It really has been a pleasure to watch those guys play throughout this tournament. Yeah, Besiktas, I absolutely love watching them. And although they didn't perform very well, they talked about they gained experience. I think that their attitude was appropriate, the way that they knew their expectations. They're like, we're going to use this to learn. We're going to use this to get better. And watching them, I think that these guys are some of the most coachable players I've seen because they take that feedback. They have the right attitude. And I think this is not the last time we've seen these members of this team. All right, let's get down to business, though, with our first best of five semifinal between SK Telecom, T1, and Fnatic. Yeah, I think this is a really good best of five coming up, and I think a lot of it will be decided by Bang in the bottom lane. Not only is he fantastic on Callista, but his Lucian has been just ridiculously good. And when they pair that with the Lulu in the mid lane, not only is it a lane bully, but it also turns into this late game carry. So they can take care of two things at once. Taking care of Steel back in the laning phase, he got down so far, and then allowing Bang in the late game to really take over and carry. I think for this first game, Fnatic doesn't have the option of banning out the Lulu. They played against it in the previous match, and they did really well, to be honest. I think they could have won if they just played the games mechanically better, particularly in the team fight. So by putting Faker on Lulu, which putting him on Lulu is just him saying, I want to play Lulu, you know, they remove the hard carry threat that he has on some really hyper carry champions like an Azir. Yeah, but the scary thing is you put him on Lulu and all of a sudden he counters majority of the assassins that Forbidden wants to pull out. I think it is such a power pick for these guys. I think they're like four and one on it when they bring this in. I just think it's such a strong pick. Yeah, I, I do feel like getting the Lulu though onto Faker stops him from taking over the early game, which gives them an advantage a little bit on Fnatic side. So Fnatic, that's what they snowballed with yesterday. And I think that that's how they're going to win this game if they force him onto the Lulu. And I feel like they really need to take the early game control because SKT seems to be really strong in grasping those dregs. Um They had 18 to three dregs in all the games they played. And I think you know, this just shows where Fnatic should maybe go for the tower dice, put early pressure, maybe put Faker on something like Lulu just to keep him like in the lane, yeah. and then start for a fast rotation. Yeah, SKT have the best dragon control of the tournament yeah. in terms of how many they pick up. Well, and first dragons have played a big part in wins so far this tournament. Now on the other side of the rift, Fnatic very nearly defeated SKT yesterday with one of our closest games of the week. 
Yeah, and if there's something that is a tool for Fnatic to win here, it has to be Huni. This guy just performs so incredibly well the entire tournament. He's one of the guys who's just keeping Fnatic consistently in the game, going for a mid lane roam on Faker on level 5 or 6 twice and getting the first blood there. But what is even more impressive, what is coming out from his, is his TP play. He's just doing incredible well with that. He is all over the map. He's putting pressure bottom lane, he's putting pressure top lane. He's knowing how to use TP, he uses it on minions and he uses it on tower. And he come all the way from the bottom side and gets the kills where they need them. Yeah, and the reason that turret uh, teleport play is so impressive because he knew the other teleport had followed and it just allows him to have his up even sooner. He knows exactly when he has to teleport where and his flanks are just amazing. Yeah, and my favorite thing about Huni is that he is not a top laner who sits around and waits for an advantage to come to him. He creates his own advantage and then he becomes a resource for the team. He's not somebody that you have to put too many resources into and if they do, they'll send Rain over up there. But he also affects other lanes. The biggest example of that was when he did not get as much jungle pressure versus SKT and just simply chose to roam out of his own instinct and get the kills on Faker. So I really like that about him so far. Yeah, and we can't talk about the top lane of, of Fnatic without mentioning their weakness, which is in the bottom lane here. Because Steelback, he's down on an average 17 CS at 10 minutes in his games. He's been a constant kind of abandoned lane for them. And that's a big problem. And I think that they should actually stick to that because Steelback, he just needs to shore up his laning phase a little bit because they're getting advantages in other lanes. And you can even see that Rainover's pressure, you can't just put him all over the place, right? You have to put him top, you have to put him middle, you have to have him like counter the other jungler. And Rainover's doing an amazing job at that. He's currently second highest kills before 15 minutes in the entire tournament, which means he has so much pressure. And he's number, number one kills at 15 minutes for junglers. That's how much pressure he's having on the map. And he's affecting all these lanes and getting successful ganks with that warrior enchant rex. I feel like that's kind of the story as well. The second highest uh, kill participation of their team prior 15 minutes is Huni. So I feel like those two together could turn the game in Fnatic's favor. And it's so funny that like, we usually hear about at 10 stats, at 20 stats. And this tournament is like, oh, all at 15 minute stats and pre 15 minutes because it's just so much pressure so many turret dives and that's early game in this game and I think both junglers are up to the task been very quick game so far this tournament now SKT's wolf is feeling confident going into today's series and spoiler alert he thinks he's predicting a clean sweep <laughs> All right, so he believes it'll be fairly one-sided. What about you, gentlemen? I have the same feeling, to be honest. I would take every single SKT player except Rainover over Bengi. Like, I really think that they're outclassing them in every lane. And even in the top lane, it can even just be even. even. It, it can just be even. <laughs> it, it could just right. be even. Before I make you lock in your predictions, though, let's go through the starting lineups. On the blue side in game one, it's SK Telecom T1. In the top lane, we have Marin, Bengi in the jungle, Faker starting us off in the mid lane, Bang at 80 carry, and Wolf on support. And then across the other side of the rift on the red side, it's the European LCS's Fnatic, Huni in the top lane, Rain over in the jungle, Fabiven in the mid lane, Steel back at 80 carry, and Yellow Star on support. Back to this conversation, though, gentlemen. Cut into the chase. Who are you predicting to win this series and move on to the finals? Spawn? Yeah. So I got some advice from Monte Cristo this morning. Just pick the Koreans, I got told. So I'm going with SKT. He goes for SKT. I will stay with Fnatic. And I think if there's any team to beat them, it's Fnatic. And I think they showed. If they just fix a little bit their late game, they are up for a really strong Still team. Koreans on that team, too. Yeah, well, well you have to adapt <laughs> a little. I'm going to go with SKT. I think they're the stronger team and they will learn from the mistakes yesterday. Yeah, I feel like SKT also have too many advantages. They also have the middle, the god of death, the god of life. They can bring out whichever one they want and that's a big strength in this best of five. And on top of all that, the way that Fnatic got an advantage yesterday was Huni going mid lane. They're not going to fall for that again. I think they have oh, a coaching staff that's going to let them, that's yeah, going to give the them that That's a big question. Practice. They have the gods, but yesterday, if it proved anything, it is that gods can bleed. Right now on LawLeesports.com, 58% of you are saying that SKT is going to win this series. So a rather close vote there out in the public. Now we're going to send it over to our caster desk to get the series underway.
Thank you very much, Dash. Welcome to Tallahassee, Florida, home of the Seminoles, and now the Mid-Season Invitational. <laughs> My name's Trevor Quickshot Henry. I'm joined by Sam Kobe Harmon Kenza and Christopher Monte Cristo Michaels, as we will be your cast a trio for the first semi-final SKT versus Fnatic. We're about to get to picks and bands. Let's be frank, Rexai has to be the number one focus for both of these teams. Picks and bands versus SKT are so difficult, and that's actually one of the reasons I think they started with Faker, is to draw that extra ban while they're on blue side of LeBlanc. You know what's interesting, though, is historically against SK Telecom, Easy Hoon actually draws more mid lane bans than Faker does by about 10, 12 percent. So people just don't can't ban out Faker quite as easily. But yes, that LeBlanc ban certainly a necessity here. And I really like what we saw Fnatic do in the the last.